Partners of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He is a big star on YouTube on the George Camel Show, and also, of course, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, and author of the brand new book that comes out next week called Breaking Free from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money and Less Stress. There it is, right there. All right. Courtney's with us. Courtney is in Colorado Springs. Hi, Courtney. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. What's up? My question is, how do I protect or how does my husband and I protect our finances against his money-hungry ex-wife? <laughs> money-hungry ex-wife. Why would yes, she have I any am. access to your finances? She's called the ex-wife for a reason. Um, basically, our main concern is that she pull more child support when she finds out that he's been married. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Would she get child support increase because he got a raise is that what you said um because we got married could she take she doesn't get more child support has... because you got married child support's okay. based on his income not yours gotcha okay so how else would the crazy ex have access to your husband's money that was the only way I was thinking. Yeah. I've heard that they do yearly audit. They do. Someone they do because your husband your husband has children and he should support those children and the law agrees with that idea. Correct. And if he gets more money as his income, he's supposed to give more to his children. That's that's not a money hungry ex. That's just dad taking care of his kids. Right. Yeah. Has but, she contacted him? Is she making threats? Or is this just all kind of in your head right now of what could happen? Um, she hasn't contacted him. I guess this is just me trying to make sure we protect ourselves. Okay. Well, you're in good shape. As long as your husband is willing to give the legal percentage of his income to his children – under the law for child support, which he legally and morally should do, um, mm-hmm. if, the, if you if you want protection from that, I can't help you. But as long as he's willing to do that, you don't need protection from anything else. She can't get anything else. She has no access. And or if your husband is spineless and just gives her money because she yells at him or something, I mean, has he got that problem? Um, no, she's not. Okay, so he's not. He doesn't just hand her money just because she puffs up or something, right? Correct. Okay. That's just a behavior issue. That's not a legal or a financial issue. But, yeah, I mean, sometimes people are intimidated by their exes or whatever, and um, we have to just kind of correct that by saying, you know, X in front is a reason. Yes. X means no mo. No mo. That's what that means. We're making sure the courts decide how this goes down, not his emotions or her. And so that's the important part. It sounds like this is largely right now just a fear versus a reality yeah like you have discovered that no one likes your husband's ex oh well that's really you know you're st- you know makes yeah, two because she's a greedy jerk okay whatever that's fine no trouble uh but she's still over there and she's the ex and the only involvement you have is just around the children and so we'll try to be nice and pleasant and give the appropriate amount of child support uh, as long as you're trying to do that then uh I don't think you're going to have any issues. There's nothing nothing she can just, you know, or unless she shows up at the doorstep and your husband just caves and starts handing her money. But that's a husband issue. That's not a protection issue then. Right? Yeah, this, this was simpler than I thought it would be. I thought there was some crazy stuff going on, but it's just child support as far as we can tell. Yeah. So yeah. very reasonable. Well, there's a real dynamic when you're the new wife and the ex is over there in the distance crazy. Mm. That's a there's dyna- still a connection that, That's point. a dynamic. Yeah. Those kids so. are still going to be in his life, so yeah. you're going to have to learn to manage it. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Christian's in Missouri. Hi, Christian. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Good. How can we help? Um, I joined the Navy, and I'm leaving for boot camp in June. Um, they cover most of your expenses, and so I have most of my five foundations covered. After I get my $500 emergency fund set up, 
and my rate is start going to step five because I paid cash for my car, they pay for college, and I don't have any daily expenses that most civilians have to pay for. What should I do with the $2,000 paycheck I get? Yeah. So you're 18? Yes, sir. Well, thank you for serving your country, sir. And thanks for going through the uh, personal finance curriculum. I can tell by the way you're talking, it stuck with you. You went to that in high school, didn't you? I'm actually still in it. I'm I'm graduating in May, and I'm taking it this year. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So boot camp is immediately after graduation, huh? Yes, sir. Wow, look at you. Okay. Well, we will graduate you from the high school curriculum to the adult curriculum, which will mean you start with a fully funded emergency fund, which is three to six months of expenses. Uh, you're making $2,000 a month. Most things are furnished. So we might call that emergency fund $5,000, not 500. 500 is for high school students. Yes, sir. Okay. But now you're, you're, you're going to leave high school and enter the land of grownups. So we're going to put you on a grown-up mm-hmm. plan. And that's going to be a, an All emergency. Right. So your first goal is going to be a $5,000 emergency fund. You have no debt, right? Correct. Okay. You paid cash for the car. And so beyond the emergency fund, you can begin investing with earned income and maybe fully fund a Roth IRA. And there's probably some retirement options through the Navy, I imagine. Okay. Maybe a TSP. My next question is um, in this curriculum, we learn everything interest rates based on a 12% interest rate for compound interest. How do I actually get that good of an interest rate? Look at your TSP in the Navy. It's the Thrift Savings Plan. They have a Roth version. You'll do that. If you look at the C plan in that, uh, it's north of 11%. It's not quite 12 right now. Average. At the C plan? The C plan. It's the common stock plan. Okay. I wouldn't put it all in there. I would put some in the S and in the I. The I is international. S is small cap. C is common stock. Those three, I'd probably put 80% in the C and 10 in the S and 10 in the I. And that's your retirement plan, Roth Thrift Savings Plan, the TSP with the military, okay? Okay. And uh, when you leave the military, you, rec- you can roll that out to an IRA if you want to. Okay. How much uh, would you recommend me putting in that retirement fund? 15% of your income after you have your $5,000 set aside. Okay. Okay. Uh, You're very uh, wise to get ahead of this, Christian. I want you to continue all the way through boot camp to give to make sure you are writing down each month before the month begins where every dollar goes because there's a lot of really stupid stuff 18 year olds in the military do with money and i don't want you doing any of that a lot of crazy crap out there son so just be careful continue to be calm and wise like you are right now and you're going to do really well you'll be so wealthy my friend thank you again for your service Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Well, George, 
It's this week. 300,000 people already know it's this week, and some of you apparently didn't know, but we're going to let you in on the secret. You're so invited. You to 300,000. You're invited. Easiest sales pitch ever because it's free. What percent of Americans say they live paycheck to paycheck? The answer is generally, for 30 years since I've been doing this, around 70%. So if you drive down your street, somewhere around seven out of 10 houses have too much month left at the end of the money. And too much car in the driveway. And too many boats and sea dews And sea dews all need a sister. So you got two of them. Yeah. Crazy just breeds. And there you go. This says uh, Americans say frequently live paycheck to paycheck. According to a recent survey, Harris poll that 65% do live paycheck to paycheck. But, you know, either way, you know what? You can be looking good and broke. Mm. That's most of America. I mean, yeah. it's land of the free, home of the broke, and we all look good, and we're comfortable with our payments until we're not. And that's why we're doing this thing. And George, did you know? You do know, but I'm going to pose this as a hypothetical I'm nervous question. I don't know. Yes, you do know. I promise you that. The stupid has a gravitational pull. Oh, that's a new science uh, lesson. Yeah. Once you get in orbit to stupid, it holds you in the orbit. It has a gravitational pull. Is that it. one of the, like Einstein's laws? You just keep going around. It's a Ramsey law, but we 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 adjust other laws of physics here to meet our. It has a gravitational pull. So if you want to break free of the orbit of stupid, oh, I like that. It require how do you break an orbit? It requires extra energy. You can't just uh, keep doing the same thing. You got to do something different. Take some real inertia. You got to you got to blow it up, right? And so that's what we're going to do. If you're stuck in the cycle of being scared. Of worrying about inflation, worrying about interest rates, worried about the president. Ah, we can help you because we've been helping people for 30 years break the cycle. Your family curse is not a permanent thing. The neighborhood you grew up in is not a permanent thing. None of this is a permanent thing because you can decide. So to kick off the year, we're hosting a free live stream this Thursday, January the 11th at 7 p.m. Central Time. This is the biggest live stream we've ever done. It's over 300,000 folks already registered. It's me, Dr. John Deloney, Rachel Cruz, George Camel, to my right, Jade Warshaw, all going to be talking about navigating money anxiety, breaking the cycle, breaking the orbital pull of stupid bad money habits that keep you stuck, practical money tips that actually work. And for the first time ever, we're going to give away $10,000. Ten people are going to win $1,000 each as you are a viewer, not signed up. You are actually viewing because we will put it up there and you will have to be watching at that moment to qualify. So you need to be watching and signing up to do this. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash break the cycle and register, and that then when you're watching, we'll know you're registered, see? You can't just pop in there. So you get registered, break the cycle, RamseySolutions.com slash break the cycle, and it's going to be huge. It already, it's already huge. Yeah, the numbers are boggling my mind. I think people are ready in 2024 just to break free from broke, and they're not where they want to be financially, but they know there's hope out there, and hopefully we can step in and help them. That's how it works. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. It's really, really cool. That's happening this week. Next week is the launch on Georgia's new book. So we're going to have a lot of fun things in the next couple of weeks here for you guys. And uh, we'll be telling you more about the book a little bit later. Rita and Charlie are with us. They are in San Jose, California. Hey, guys, how are you? Great. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I, I'm 50. I just married my husband, Charlie, for a year and a half. I bought a home 20 years ago in Santa Clara, which is nearby San Jose, and the home is completely paid off. I just paid it in December, and it's probably worth $1.4 million. He has a house in the mountains that has about $200,000 left to pay off in mortgage. My dream has always been to get a, a another home in the by the ocean in Mendocino. And so we recently just looked at a home there that was $300,000, needs a lot of repair, so probably around $500,000. So my husband's idea was to take out a, a loan on my house that was paid off. Where, where do y'all live? I don't really want to do that. You live in any of these properties? 
currently? We do. So we we live in the mountains part time at his home, mm-hmm. and then we live in the Bay Area in in my home when I work. I'm a nurse. Oh, I see. Okay, so you live in the paid for home. You've got a mountain home that's not paid for, and you're talking about going further yeah. in debt to buy a third home, a second toy. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you guys are fairly new to Ramsey. Um, we teach folks to get out of debt and stay out of debt as the best best path to build wealth. Okay. Not go into debt, particularly yes. for toys. I've I've got you know vacation homes and, and uh, pay cash for them. Those are toys. Yes. If you have a third house, now you're splitting time between three houses. You're consuming all all three of these houses partially. When you add up what you are paying to stay there per night, it will make you throw up. Yeah. That's a toy. You need to be able to pay cash yeah. for that toy. So you're going to move backwards and go another half million dollars into debt instead no. of moving forwards financially. No, so I, I, don't would deci- do I would decide what I'm going to where I want to live, and um, what's your household income now? Uh, he's retired, so. It's about one, well, mine is like 180 between the two of us. Okay. I, I would have a game plan to get the mountain paid off. And once it's paid off, I would start investing and saving. And when I had some extra cash, I would buy the house on the beach. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's, so that's kind of grandma's old fashioned way. Save up and pay for it. Yes. But it works. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're you're you don't want to go backwards because here's the thing. He's retired. So how 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 old is Charlie? He is here with me. He's 55. Oh, he quit early. Okay. He did. He Good for him. There's heating and air conditioning. Okay. Cool. Well, I got a feeling he could go make a ton of money by the way doing something if he wanted to just for the fun of it. Don't have to for yeah. sure, but he could if you wanted to advance some of these um some of these goals. Um, yeah, you know, uh, so earning some income, I'm 63. I, I mean, I still work 40 hours a week, so not cause I have to just cause I love what I do. And, um, he, so that, that's kind of a lot of, he does a lot of work on the side. So okay. there's a lot of people who need his help. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, I mean, the, the, I, I, you do not want to enter your golden years with home debt. That's what I figured. I said, I don't want to have yeah. another 20, 30 year mortgage yes. when I just paid it off. It destabilizes your golden years. Okay. And as we've studied millionaires and we studied 10,000 of them, the vast majority of them have all of their home and everything paid for is one of the big elements of their million dollar net worth. The other one is, of course, their investments. Okay. And so I want you to, you, you're millionaires already based on what you've told me. Because of just the equity in these two properties, I don't even know what your nest egg is. So you're, you're you're a millionaire, but you don't want to go backwards and destabilize this. Debt adds risk. More debt adds more risk. And that's what was – when you all start talking about this, Rita, and your stomach tightened up, that's what you were doing. You were measuring risk. Your stomach said, no! Yeah, and HELOCs are going to put your home at risk. And so the bank could take your home if you default, you misstep in any way. And that's not the kind of retirement I want. No, you just, everything paid for, big old pile of money. This is retirement. Uh, this is the golden years, baby. And, and you're on your way. Congratulations on the new marriage. Uh, so let's just take our time, unfold this the right way. Go with uh, Rita's plan, not Charlie's. Sorry, Charlie. Sorry, there you go. literally. Finally, we've been waiting for that one day. I've been ready to say that, but you know, there you go. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. 
And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly offers a helpful winter maintenance checklist that you can download for free at neighborly.com. And for the more challenging stuff in and around your home, Neighborly has local pros to help. Find out more at neighborly.com slash Ramsey. Today's question comes from Sam in Michigan. Uncle Dave, I'm 37, married with no kids yet. My net worth is $1.1 million, 600 in portfolio, 500 in equity in my home, which is worth 900. I make about $200,000 a year, have no consumer debt, and have our three-month emergency fund. I just got into hunting, and there's several shotguns and rifles I want, but the missus doesn't see why I need so many guns. Uncle Dave, being a man of great means with many guns, what is a fair ratio? He said, I'm also about to pull the trigger on a new Lund Rebel XL as my first fishing and hunting boat. It's 39000 out the door. I'm paying cash for it, but would be pulling the money from my portfolio to do so. I feel it passes the burn it on the floor test. What is your take? Thanks so much for your time. This is a fun question. Live like no one else, so later you get to live and give like no one else. Well done, Sam in wow. Michigan. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Sam, the only thing I'll tell you is is that there seems to be a, a ratio that every time I get a gun, she gets a new expensive purse. Tit for tat. There seems to be a trade-off there. So um, that's the only thing I'll tell you. All I heard here was about you buying stuff. I didn't hear anything about her getting stuff. Ugh. So I think there's some uh, some enjoyment with money that you're learning to do that is within reason. And um, it's not a certain number. But uh, all, all kidding aside, it actually does generally cost me a purse depending on the gun so uh, or something else. But, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to get one. Of it's like revenge spending, right? Yeah, none so, of this has to do with money. This is just her feelings about him owning yeah, all of this, yeah, all these toys. I, I can tell you, Sharon has exactly the same opinion. She has absolutely has no need to understand why I need all these firearms, but she doesn't know about the zombies. So That's right. The zombie apocalypse. I mean, you have to be ready. So, um, no, seriously, dude, it's just a toy. It's just a thing. Uh, I mean, uh, whether it's whether you're collecting guns, whether you're collecting uh, whatever the hobby is, whatever your hobby is, whatever the thing is you collect, whatever the thing you enjoy doing, hunting, uh, you know, boats, skiing, fishing, whatever. The trick is just to keep it in balance and that both of you have a say so. So I and all, all joking aside, I still do talk to Sharon. We don't do any purchases around our place without both of us being in on it. I don't walk in and go, I just spent eight thousand dollars. I don't do that. Um, I could, but it just doesn't, it's not how we got here. The way we got here is working together and both of us communicating and talking about it. And she doesn't go spend $8,000 on a whatever without talking to me. And, you know, we do, and, and, but 99% of the time it's like, yeah, sure. Because it's, it's, it fits the burn test. I can burn that much money in the middle of the floor. That means we can enjoy the item. It's not going to cause us financial trouble. We're not buying it for someone else. 
We don't. We quit doing that a long time ago. Doing it with the right ago. motive. Yeah. And so you're, and he's not. He's not buying these guns for someone he enjoys else. He's it. buying them for him. So, uh, so is the key here, you know, Dave doesn't have to value all the things Sharon values, and Sharon doesn't have to value all the things Dave values, but there's communication involved, and she goes, okay, it's yeah, in the budget, I mean, you're, you're paying you're cash. you're probably experiencing this around purchasing things for the new baby. Oh, yes. There are things that you don't understand. I don't, you know, uh, most men don't understand China cabinets. I still don't. We don't understand China that we don't use, and we don't understand an expensive cabinet to put it in. We None just of use this paper makes plates. sense to us. It was up to me. We just use paper plates. Yeah. Just throw them See, out. there you go. And if it was up to her, he'd have a BB gun. That's right. So there you go. So, I mean, it's just, there, there's some things like you don't have to understand everything to see that your spouse gets joy from it and that it is a reasonable purchase within the thing. Now, where we do run into trouble is when someone buys a boat and puts it on payments. Mm. The, you know, the, they got $60,000 in credit card debt, and they want to buy an $8,000 shotgun. Now, that's just, that's childish. That, add, that adds financial stress to the family. Yeah, that's that's not, that's the, the opposite of what we're talking about. He's got a million-dollar net worth. He's 37 years old. So he can afford a shotgun, or she can afford a nice purse, or whatever the thing is that you're worried about there. Uh, the trick is when you get out of control with it. So you're just trying to do that, and, uh, I mean, True. I'm kidding around. I'm being snarky about it, but it's really no joke. There are things that I buy that Sharon uh, agrees to, but has no understanding why I want them at all. And the same with her. I'm like, you want to do, you know, what? I mean, she took a trip with a bunch of girls this summer. And I'm like, really? There? You want to go there? But it, I'm not going, so what do I care? She wanted yeah, to go. It's her experience. You know, let her have it. So that, that's the thing. So just, just, hold things with an open hand but i i I, the 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 biggest glaring thing i see in this sam is not whether you can afford to do it uh is that you didn't mention a single thing that she gets to do while you're doing all these things and you really do have to have some what of a balance it's not tit for tat exactly you know like four thousand six hundred and twenty two dollars i get she gets to spend a a thirty nine thousand dollar purse that's yeah that's it could happen but um yeah yeah so there you go I mean, that, that you just you don't have to understand everything. She didn't have to understand everything. Can we do it? And it doesn't affect our family negatively. And do we still have room in the budget to invest? Do we still have room in the budget to give? If this goes sideways, um, has have I caused myself a problem? And I, none of that, none of that's here. No. Do you see it? No. I mean, it looks good on paper. It's more the yeah. relational issue. Now you just left out that I get called Uncle Dave twice in the email. I like that. That's pretty cool. It's better than Grandpa Dave, right? Papa Dave. That's nice. Yeah, that's that's what the grandkids that's call me. That's reserved for not, the grandkids. That's not insulting. Not for what? 37-year-old men. <laughs> well, there you go. You okay. get uncle for that. There you go. Yeah, I'll go with that. All right. Melody is with us in Denver. Hi, Melody. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Happy Monday, gentlemen. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you two doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? Okay. Uh, let me present my question, and then I can talk a little bit about myself. Uh, question. My husband and I, uh, and I do not have any debt. Good. Um, the only exception is our mortgage. And um, while we are saving for our three to six months emergency fund, do you think that's a good idea? We also do some investment in the meantime. If yes, what kind of investment tool would you recommend? Well, thanks for the question, Melody. I love that you guys are on that stage. It's a fun place to be when you're building for the future instead of paying for the past. And if you're following through with the Ramsey baby steps, you guys are in baby step three. And those are done one at a time, one through three. And so baby step three, three to six months of expenses and a fully funded emergency fund. Once you have that and only when you have that, should you begin investing 15%. And the reason is because you need financial foundation under you. Because if you're investing and you don't have the emergency fund in place, you're still at risk here. And so the goal is to kind of eat the vegetables first, get out of debt, get the emergency fund. Now we can invest 15% with no problem versus people investing 3% while trying to save, while trying to pay off debt. We found that if you do too many things at once, you won't make any progress. Yeah. You know, for years, George, we had folks that, well, they get a match at work and they're just really geared up about the power of compound interest. They really want to start investing. And so they go stinking load up their 401k and have no money at all Mm. in an emergency fund. Well, guess what? 
They go back into debt. No. Well, they'll go back in debt or they'll use their 401k Ugh. for their emergency fund. You know, the, you know, the car transmission goes out. I got no money. You know, Aunt, Mar the 401k Aunt Martha though. dies. I got to get two airline tickets to get over across the other side of the United States somewhere. And, you know, that four grand ends up as a 401k loan, mm -hmm. a credit card debt, or worse than that, they cash it out. Because you did things in the wrong order, you get penalized. Not technically penalized by the government, but penalized just called stupid tax. Yeah. Well, baby so. step three, it's a hard one. You don't have the excitement of paying off debt. You don't have the excitement of investing, but you got to make this a priority to get that emergency fund in place. Yeah, you need a rainy day fund. Takes I mean, the drama out of life. Yeah. Dave, you ought to be positive. I'm positive. It's going to rain. You need a rainy day fund. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. George Camel, Ramsey Personalities, my co-host today. Lamar is in St. Louis. Hey, Lamar, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks, Dave. Good talking to you. You too, man. What's up? Um, I guess around 2010 or so, um, not maybe a little bit before that, I started listening to some of your, um, um, I don't know whether it was a podcast or I think it was even tapes or something that you put out. And since then, you know, I've used all your information to uh, to make myself uh, do the things that you were doing. I don't know whether you called it baby steps back then or not, but uh, I started doing it. And um, I'm 63 now, uh -huh. and I've been doing it for all this time. The work? And I finally, excuse me? Did it work? Well, it worked a little too well, I think. <laughs> um, at a point now in my life, I'm 63. I, I was raised on a farm, so I've been working since I was six. Yeah. And I sit and watch some people retire, and they'll go sit on the couch, and they expire, you know, the next year. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, I could do that if I wanted to. What's your net worth? But uh, I'd say four to five million or something like that. Yeah. Way to go. I'm proud of you. But, you know, I, I've got... Uh, probably five years of, um, of cash for emergencies, and then I've got uh, land. I got um, uh, my, I'm, I'm, I don't owe anybody any money. I got a nice home. I've got an, uh, I got investment real estate that Way to go. Uh, it's paid for. It needs to be uh, developed, but I'm not going to attack that. So my question to you is, you know, I'm kind of post Ramsey now. What kind of what kind of um, no? You are poster you Ramsey. Point? You're the poster child for Ramsey. You you did it, man. You live like no one else. Now you're in a position. So your question's what is what to do now? Yeah, what's next? Well, you enjoy what you do for work still, and you're able to do it. Well, you know, I'm getting to a point where you look at Brown. I work for a corporation, and uh, you know. Uh, you sitting there thinking, okay, you could go out, you'd be fine. Uh, I'm getting to be somewhat of a dinosaur, I guess, even though I'm a chemical engineer. But the thing is, is um, you know, should I move on? I mean, there's no pressure from the company to get rid of me. It's just one of those things, you know. It's just a question of that? if you, you know, if I'm you hate confused, going, if you hate going to work every day, you've earned the right to quit and do something else. 
and you could go start a little business or you could develop that land. I mean, you can find something to do. Yeah, I already own a business on the side, too. Okay. So. I mean, but if you don't, if you like going to work and you like the people and, you know, yeah. there's no, nobody like says it. you have to quit. Right. Well, pe- people people that. think that, but, you know. Dave's still here. Yeah. And I'll be here a while well, longer. Lord willing, the creek doesn't rise, right? Yeah, you know, and the other thing I do is, see, I own a training facility for uh, diamond sports, for uh, pitching and hitting and everything else. It's associated with baseball and fast pitch softball. Wow. Is that kind of a passion project? On the side, things like that. Is that a passion project or something you're doing for money? Lamar, are you doing that baseball thing as a passion project or something you're just doing for money? Passion, pure passion. If you worked over there every day, would that make you happy? Well, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping that, that may take up some of my time. I don't know where to take it all. We mm-hmm. put that in in 2018, mm-hmm. and it was put in specifically for fast pitch softball, and it's it's baseball now too. But but it, within uh, by 2021, we started winning state championships in our little area here mm-hmm. in, in fast pitch softball. So it was very effective. Mm-hmm. And it, this is not a promo. Just, I'm just trying to tell you what. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's almost a bucket list thing, and I've almost marked it off. Well, you could expand it, take it to another community. You could have five of them in five years instead of just one of them. Or yeah. you can just keep running that. Go. You said something about developing that land. You might do that. Um, you know, I, I've cut back to four days a week. I don't work Fridays most of the time. If we're doing something around here, I come in. But uh, most of the time I'm off. And so – and that gives Sharon and I time to do stuff, and uh, I can work. I can piddle around with other stuff here and there. But uh, you know, it's up to you. I enjoy what I do, and so I will. My plan is to do it as be on this microphone as long as I make sense. When I quit making sense, James is going to take me off, and we're going to blame George. That's right. We'll probably meet both of us at that point. We'll probably just run reruns. Why you think you think you you won't make sense? You'll you know what? St- you're, we'll have, you're planning on going early. Yeah, I'm you're going with go you, Dave. Early. You're going to get like early. Whenever you go, I'll go. Early oh retirement. Gosh. I'm kidding. I don't think so. We'll have AI, Dave, by then, so I'm not worried about that. But I I do like the idea of Lamar dreaming a little bit. That's what we're trying to get him to do is just yeah. write some of these things down, things that you've been itching to do for a long time and never got around to it. Yeah. And if you enjoy your work as a chemical engineer and the people are reasonable, and the company's reasonable, and you want to keep doing it, there's nothing that says you got to quit just because you got $5 million. And he's right. The people that check out and just sit on the couch. They they expire. They, I like the way he put that. It's like bad cereal. It expired. This mustard expired. Don't leave the milk on the counter. It expires. Yeah, that's right. He's right. That's what happens. Because, you know, man was made to do stuff. Woman was made to do stuff. He's not scared that's of work, and he doesn't hate it. It's no. a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's fun. Don't you don't have to follow what everybody else says to do. It didn't you didn't you didn't get five million dollars doing that. Kelly in Milwaukee, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's up? Um so my question today is about whole life insurance. Mm-hmm. Um so my husband has a um whole life insurance policy that was started for him by his grandparents when uh, he was a baby. I'm sorry. The old Gerber uh, plan. And luckily, we are not um, paying the premiums on it. Yeah. His parents are paying the premiums. Yuck. Um, and it currently has a $70,000 cash value. Um, and so I want to know if it would be a good idea to cash that out at yes. this point. Yes. <laughs> and use it for a larger down payment on a house. Yes. Okay then. Do you have children? <laughs> we do. Yes. Do you have Do you have life insurance? We do. Enough to take care of you if he, your husband, dies, or vice versa, without this whole yes. life policy. Yes. Good. Cash it in and use that money for something good. Sitting in a whole life policy, it's making one percent. And when he dies, they're going to keep seventy thousand dollars and pay only the face value of that policy. Mm-hmm. Whole, whole life life insurance is the payday lender of the middle class. They've been screwing and tattooing the public for decades since they were babies, getting away with it yeah. since they were babies. Yeah, they yeah. put they have so put even, so much money into this policy that it makes me want to barf for there to be seventy thousand dollars in there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and me and my husband know that. Like, yeah. we're not going to be. Are you in control of this policy? Can you all cash it out, or you got to talk the parents into it? Um, we would have to talk to his parents, but they are very open to us doing what we want with it. Good. Cash it out. Use it for a down payment on a house. Good question. And you already knew that we were going to say that. I'm sure. Easy. And that's a good caveat, Dave. When people go, hey, I'm going to cancel this whole life policy, make sure that you have term life in place, 10 to 12 times your income. First. Yes, before you cancel it. You don't want any gap in coverage there. Right. That's when the devil comes for you. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're protected uh, and you don't have any gaps and then cancel the whole life policy. Yeah. Never. But, man, it hurts. That sunk cost fallacy of we've been paying these premiums for decades since Jimmy was in diapers. It's somehow sentimental at that point. It's so special to us. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know how they market these whole life policies so well that Gerber got involved and went, we can make some money off of these guys. Gerber's been doing it for as long as I've been on the air. Yeah, but I mean, buying buying investment products from a baby food company. That just it, smells just like kinda a dirty sound, diaper. kind of sounds stupid to start with, doesn't it, when you just say it that way? Mm. I mean, it's just like, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to buy my clothes at the transmission store. Yeah, buying any you know, insurance like, as an investment product stinks, but buying it from a baby food company is just next like, level. It's just something there, something very interesting. Hopefully we can reverse the trend, Dave. Put a cute little kid on the outside of a rip-off policy. A little baby. I think that's what does it. A little cherub. A little cherub a little on that. cherub on the outside. That jar of sweet potato. Oh, my goodness. Both make me want to barf. <laughs> Uh, This is The Ramsey Show. Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the George Camel Show on YouTube, and co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour with the one and only Rachel Cruz. He's my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Austin starts this hour off in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Austin. How are you? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. What's up? Hey, so I have a couple questions. Um, I feel like I'm in a a little bit of a pickle. Um, So just long story short, I'm a registered nurse um, traveling right now. My wife is a stay-at-home mom. We just had a baby this year. Um, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I got into a nursing anesthesia school this year, and I started in May. Wow. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, it brings on a lot of new challenges. Since we can't work for three years, it's um, a little bit stressful. But we have about combined about forty grand in debt right now. I'm wondering, a lot of that doesn't have any interest. I'm wondering if I should go ahead and wipe that all out right now because I'm able to with my funds, or should I save that? pay the minimum monthly payments with no interest and save more for school since my wife will still be staying at home and um, I won't have an income for three years. Um, I can maximize my federal loans when we get to that, but um, obviously not having an income makes me very nervous. So you're planning on borrowing all the way through this? Yeah, I think so. Since I feel like my salary afterwards, I'll take care of that in one or two years. Yeah, you're making the assumption everything goes okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, with emergency funds and everything, but you never know what life could throw you to at the same time. So, yeah, so I'm a little bit nervous right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, going 300k in debt, I'd be really nervous. Um, I, I got to yeah. tell you, I think your career path is phenomenal. It's excellent. Thank you. 
I think your I think your method of getting there really sucks. Really? Yeah, it scares me to death. Yeah, um, I mean, I can't. Me I, I, I if you know, if I was going to as much coaching as we've done in the last thirty years about money stuff, if I was going to dial in what some could, someone could do to make a pile of money, it would be exactly what you're doing. It's a great income stream. You're going to, you're going to make a lot of money if everything goes okay. If it doesn't go okay, you're going to have a huge Mount Everest of mess. Yeah, exactly. You don't pass the boards. Something happens to your health. Something happens to your wife's health in the middle of this. You have to stop and take care of her. I mean, Mm -hmm. you you can have a car thing. I mean, anything can come along here. This scares me to death. So the company that you work for, you're doing travel nursing. Yes, sir. Where are you going to practice when you graduate? Do you have any idea? Um, So right now, my dad's also a nurse anesthetist. Um, At his work, they offer a stipend program. So I plan on um, whenever his boss gets back to him, I may be eligible to do a stipend program, which gives me anywhere from probably 10 10 to maybe 30 grand a year to get through to work with them for. um, We still have to negotiate the, the amount of time that I'll have to do there, but um, it'll be for a set few years. Um, so I have that. I also have. Are they going to pay for the? Are they going to pay the tuition and a stipend? They're just going to pay the stipend. So my anesthesia program, I went to one of the cheapest. I picked one of the cheapest in the nation. Thank God, since I'm in the state. That's so good. How much? Forty-five grand for forty-five or um, forty-five thousand for three years. Oh, excellent. Okay, yeah. man. So you can cash flow this. Wow. So why don't you Thank work you. your butt off between now and then and pile up that much? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm uh, planning on doing. Why don't you just um, pay cash so, for it? Uh, my, yeah, I, um, it's either I want to pay cash for that, but should I take care of the debt right now? So yes. Do you, you have any money right now? Came along. Yeah. You need $85,000 between now and May. Pretty much. And your my wife is going to be working money, while you're in anesthesia $1, school $1, to pay the bills if you don't get the stipend. Yeah, she's she's also a registered nurse, and she can pick up whenever she wants. Essentially, she, she's going to be doing that. That's called the price of what it takes to get your butt through school. Exactly. Can you um, make eighty five k in the next me. six months? You can make eighty five k between months? now and May. Yeah, it, well, the contract rates are really down right now, especially for pediatrics. So I'm struggling to find a contract where I don't have to leave my family for so long. Um, I think. Are you limited to pediatric? Period. Yeah, I just do pediatric intensive care right now. I know. Are you limited to that with your licensing? Yes. Yeah, with my experience. No, not your not your licensing, just your experience. Yeah, just my experience. Yeah. Um, and and, and your I mindset. So, so listen, thing. you need to go change the oil in cars or whatever it takes to find 85K. I don't give a crap about your experience. I want you to go make a big pile of money between now and may and have no debt and forty five thousand dollars in your pocket and a game plan for your wife to work enough for y'all to eat while you finish this degree if you don't get the stipend and then you do this okay. debt free you do it debt free because you're going to come out making Absolutely. 200 to 300 if you'll do this right okay aren't you yeah yeah, yeah i should come out making at least minimum probably 180 200 000. 200 yeah. coming out and you'll be three before in an eye blink it's a great career field but all you're going to have yeah, to do, I'm listen, excited. here's the thing. This is, this is a time that you and your wife do inconvenient things that are harsh so that you don't have to do inconvenient, harsh things later. Yeah, absolutely. You pay, a price, you pay a price to get this done. And it's going to be a, yeah. it's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be no fun. People are going to roll their eyes and say, "Why didn't you just take out a student loan?" Because you're an idiot. Yeah. People that tell people that tell you that, that you just look at them and say, "Because you're an idiot." I'm not taking out a student loan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to work my way through this. My wife's going to work. You both have nursing degrees. Go make a big old pile of money, man. Right now, real quick, crazy. Go crazy. Act like your life depends on this. Because here's the other path: you lazily stumble in to taking on $150,000 in debt, and then you graduate and people say, well, you're a nurse anesthetist. you got to have a good lifestyle. Upgrade the car, man. Get the car payment. And it never ends. Yeah. And so I want you to graduate no debt, making 200000 with that baby and going, we can do whatever we want. You can stay home forever, honey, if you want. No, I got this. 200 coming out of the gate, 300 in an eye blink. 
Yeah. That's amazing. Very cool. And it's not that hard. I mean, 80, you're making 45 to cover the programs, no biggie. Paying off 40, you can do that. That's 85, and, and the two of you roll up your sleeves. You've got great, great hearts, great brains, great degrees, a great direction. Lean into all of that and make this work. And if the stipend trade-off is reasonable, I'll take that stipend deal. But if it's not reasonable, if, if they want 10 years for 30 grand, well, screw that. No, thank Those you. handcuffs ain't worth it. not doing that. Juice ain't but, worth the squeeze, as they say. Yeah, there you go. So just gotta, you got to measure that out, see if that's worth it. But it might be easier for your wife just to work a few. Because she can work 12. Somebody work three 12s while you're in school. Real easy, man. It's everywhere. There's a shortage of nurses, as you know, everywhere. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. He has a little thing happening next week. A little thing. We have a book launch here. It's a Woo! major, major thing. Book launch next week for George. Breaking Free from Broke comes out next Tuesday on the 16th. And if you pre-order it, you are going to get all kinds of goodies, like $100 worth of stuff. Instant access to Georgia's newest talk, Show Me the Money. You'll get exclusive access to an online private event, which is a Q&A with George. Uh, you're also going to get an audio book and an e-book of this book. And this book is so fun. Breaking Free from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money and Less Stress. We uh, The only downside of the book was we had to uh, invent a new font to cover the snark. It's the snark font. Because George is the king of snark. I had a lot of fun writing it. And, uh, you know, the research and the humor coming together is a beautiful thing. And we got a, one of our first reviews on the website, Dave, because people got the ebook early if they pre ordered before the new year. Oh, so you can get it. Can you get it now if you get the ebook? I think if you order past New Year, you have to wait until launch day now. But oh, okay. who knows? Okay. Don't ask me. I don't, you know, I don't make the, I don't call the shots. But okay. this review is hilarious from Michael K. He said, came for the snark, stayed for the smarts. Quite possibly the funniest and easiest financial book to read. Once you start, you won't be able to put it down. I wasn't able to. You'll laugh out loud the whole time while learning. This book is a must read for everyone, especially young adults. The amount of data back knowledge this book provides while being such a joy to read is staggering. Michael, what a kind review. Michael, the check's in the mail. That's an That's ad. That's beautiful. I know. It's a great ad. Very kind I of I couldn't him. have said it as well myself. I'm glad he said it. And you know, when you're writing a book, you hope all of these things are said well, about exactly the book. That's exactly what you set out to do. That's what I set out to do. Can I make a really easy to read, fun financial book that's the financial literacy you never but it's had? But so research-backed, because there is. There's a ton of research in it. I could have jokes all day, but I wanted to make sure it was ironclad with data, so it's not just my opinion, and uh, it's in there. 130 yeah. sources. So pre-order before the 15th. And you get $100 worth of stuff when you buy a $20 book. Not a bad deal at all. Breaking Free from Broke by George Camel at RamseySolutions.com. Hit the store, and you're going to get the free bonus items. Go ahead and get the book now. Um, George, I have bought – Sharon was making fun of me because I ordered a new book last night. You uh, love books. You're I love a big books. reader. I have bought so many books. I have read some wacky books in the past – uh, three weeks I've read in the past four weeks I've read three 
full, wow. full size hardbacks. And, um, I mean, just strange stuff. And I, and then I, what ends up happening with me is, and there were all three good books, actually, all three of them. One of them was, um, uh, uh, Michael Esther, Easter, who did the, uh, the comfort, comfort crisis. crisis. He's got yeah. a new one called, uh, scarcity bring. And he was on on the show to promote it and gave me the book. And I just, just now read it. He was on. About he's become a ago. friend of ours now. Yeah. yeah. And he's, uh, the book's really good. It's, it's talk about research based, but yeah. And then I read a couple of others that are just odd books, but, uh, I knew odd people that needed to read them that were friends of mine. And so I'm buying all of these books and sending them to people now. Yes. And Sharon's like, would you quit buying books? You're in the book business. And I'm like, No. I'm in the book business. That's why I love books. You have a whole publishing house. You love books so much. I own a publishing company, so shut up. Yes, I'm not going to. Of course I'm going to buy books. George's book, only 20 bucks. It's a great deal. Hey, it helps us if you pre-order it. It helps George hit the bestseller list, which is a marketing touch. We would appreciate you pre-ordering it if you're going to get it. Plus, we and that's why we bribe you and give you $100 worth of stuff extra to pre-order it between now and next Monday. Because the goal is to reach new people. So they see this on the list, and they go, must be a good book. All these people bought it, and I believe it is. So I, got, I, I love uh, that. You know, a guy holding up on an orange cover, holding up words. That's George. That's all it That's takes. It. Just, I'm pushing back against the toxic money culture, Dave. That's That was the idea. I saw, I saw the flex. Yeah, we hit you my could, muscles. You can see the you can see the muscles. They're covered in denim. I don't want to scare anyone so, off. Don't want, don't want anybody to be freaked out. It's too by, intimidating. By the physique here. All right, uh, Alexis is in Columbia, South Carolina. Hi, Alexis. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, George. How are y'all doing? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Uh, nothing much. I am trying to decide. I have an HVAC that I need to replace. I just moved into this house last year, and it's like 40 years old, uh, so it needs to be replaced. Um, and so my question is, do I I want to max out my Roth area this year, um, but I also know that the HVAC is going to be around twelve to $15,000 to replace. And so my question is, do I stop the hold on maxing out the Roth array and build savings or continue to do both? How much debt do you have? Uh, I don't have any debt besides my mortgage. Good. How much money do you have saved? $9,000. That's your emergency fund? Yes. Okay. What's your household income? Um, per month or annual? Either. Um, so 5300 a month. Take home? Um, take home. That is take home. How long have you been doing that? Um, just for the past year. Okay, so that's where you got nine thousand and got rid of the debt and got a house, right? But the the furnace is running; it's just old, right? It works. I'm okay. Just, I so if you save two thousand dollars a month for three months, you'd have enough for the furnace. Okay. And did I do that right? Why was that wrong? That's right. Two thousand a month. Yeah, for, you're right. For three months. Why is that wrong? Or can you do that? Um, so with the 5,300, 3,700 goes towards my mortgage and bills, and then I put 1,000 in savings. Oh, mortgage and bills. Oh, okay. Mortgage How much is your is mortgage? Huh? My mortgage is $1,400. Oh, okay. All right, that's better. I feel better. Where's the other? I mean, you got a whole 2,300 worth of bills? Um, well, the way that I budget my finances, you know. Okay, I'd take a good look at that budget and see what can we cut right now. And if there's anything, you know, that feels frivolous that we can cut temporarily, I would do that to create the margin to save up for this HVAC. Yeah, and then just be systematically putting 15% of your household income into retirement. But um, if you've got an emergency fund, you ought to be able to save up some money while you have an emergency fund. It might take you four months. I don't know. But um, Does the know. HVAC have four months left in it? Sure. I think so. Yeah, it's just making noises like it's on Christmas Story or something. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I would also get some bids because $15,000 feels like a lot, Dave. You've replaced some HVACs in your day. I don't know what they, what they cost now. Depends on what it is, yeah. But. Yeah, you, I, y'all always get two or three bids and learn something when you're buying something that expensive and you know, f- try to find a friend that knows people in the business and you can teach that can teach you about this whole process and, you know, all that kind of stuff so that you can keep from, you know, maybe it's 12,000 instead of 15. 
that would be a cool thing. That's a big difference. Yeah, and maybe you don't need the Bentley of furnaces. Maybe you just need the Chevrolet of furnaces. I don't know they made those. Chevy's I'm, in the furnace business. I'm just um, making this up right here. I do that pretty regularly. Open phones at 888 So, George, one of the things that she can do with the Every Dollar Budget is to sit down with the app. And usually when someone has broken things out the way she has, she's got only two buckets. 3700 is my expenses, including her $1,400 payment, right? And... And, and then I'm, then I'm free after that. And and that might be true. It might be true. But I would rather you just say, all right, I'm going to make sure I take care of the necessities of life, food, shelter, clothing, transportation, utilities, right there on the budgeting app. And then go, okay, uh, I got to take care of my insurance over here too. All right, what else have I got? And you just keep looking at it and go, all right, now, where is the rest of this going? Because every time someone sits down and does a budget, particularly in every dollar budget, you always have this sense of, Where's the rest of it going? It's a little mystery. I make that much. Where did it disappear to? Yeah. I don't have that many bills. It's um, but And John Maxwell, our friend, says that a budget is people telling their money what to do instead of wondering where it went. And so when you start doing a budget, you will feel, you will have the sensation as if you got a raise. Every time. Every time. And, um, and I can tell you're not doing a detailed budget because you've got it broken down into just two buckets. Huge buckets. And I love every dollar because you can create sinking funds. So I can start saving up $1,000 a month for that repair, and it will automatically set it aside for me, which is great. Absolutely. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the dead free stage. Raymond and Lana are with us. Hey guys, how are you? We're Better doing... than we deserve. I hear you. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Nashville. And uh, where do you guys live? South Haven, Michigan, which is near Kalamazoo in southwest Michigan. Uh, and I think there's like a football game tonight. There might be. And you're here instead. We're here instead. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Here to do a debt-free scream. How much debt have you paid off? 128000 in two years. Good for you. And your range of income during that two years? Ninety to 120000 or so. Cool. What do you all do for a living? Special ed teacher. Mm-hmm. And I'm a behavioral specialist in the same school system. Awesome. Very cool. What kind of debt was the 128? Mostly mortgages and how, or car payments. 
and paid a little credit card. Mm-hmm. Paid off your house? Two houses. Two Woo! of them. Yep. Wow. We sure I'm did. looking at weird people. Yes. Yep. Look at you. No <laughs> debt in the world anywhere of any kind. Exactly. Yeah. How exactly. does that feel? Wonderful. Yep. Baby step seven. Wow. Look at you. Way to go. Way to go. So what happened two years ago that put you on this Ramsey journey? Well, COVID kind of hit us, and then we kind of started selling things in the house. We sold the whole basement. We just put that on eBay, Marketplace, and everything, and we just sold, sold, sold. People were coming up and down our driveway every night. Our next-door neighbor thought we were selling drugs, but it was my brother, so he knew we weren't selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we live in Michigan, so there was just a cornfield between me and my brother. So I love we're it. out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So you, sold, we, you sold stuff like crazy, but what, what, what caused the switch to flip to cause you to do all this? Well, we were looking at our finances, and we figured we could retire. Well, we couldn't 60, retire. We couldn't retire until we were 67. Mm-hmm. And that didn't ap- appeal to us at all. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we just retired. We both just retired oh, from the wow. school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you paid off everything and retired. How old are you? I'm 61. 59. All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, you beat that 67 over the head. Way to yeah. go. Yeah. Way sure to did. go. So how'd you get connected up with us? Podcasts. And and. I prayed. We were praying about it. Mm-hmm. And every time we prayed, the name Dave Ramsey just kept coming up. We couldn't go anywhere without someone mentioning Dave Ramsey. So, wow. So, um, That's right, a little scary. That's a haunting it, prayer right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, we really felt like we need to open the book. Okay. You know, there we and go. Then, yeah, and game on. And you went, this makes sense. Let's yeah. try this. Yeah. Wow. What are the properties worth? About each property is about 250000 Way oh, to go. And how much in your nest egg? Okay. Um, so we have about 500000 in retirement. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're millionaires. Yeah. Look yeah. at you. Yeah. Baby steps millionaires. Yeah. yeah. Just yes. like that. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Yeah. People were making fun of us because we're driving old cars and the hubcaps fell off a race car. He was driving a 2009 Malibu and he wasn't going to replace them. So people were laughing and he wore his shoes till they had holes in them. I wasn't quite that good. but <laughs> Ray, you're just cheap. He yep. was cheap, yeah. I was cheap. <laughs> but it's like we, you upgraded the shoes. I don't see any holes. No holes. Yeah. <laughs> but yep. yeah, we had um, eight different jobs in addition to our teaching jobs wow so we, so we just went out and really worked hard and you know if somebody needed help in a restaurant i would you know wait tables yeah if somebody needed help bartending lana would bartend yeah and we just rolled with that and and uh then we started doing side businesses we both have a boat well we have a boat and we've had it for a number of years and i would wax the boat and paint the bottom of our own boat and then during covid you know other people needed that service is done so we started doing that and we started a nice little business now oh. and we're gonna use that like you say to until, help finance until you know, we our retirement get social security we're gonna be washing and waxing boats so well why not yeah we got a side that's business fun. so we're semi-retired really it's that's not good. glamorous but it's yeah it's a lot of fun good money too it's good money yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. and steady work and steady, steady work, work. Yeah. And it's funny, we'll be washing a boat in a slip, and then two other people will come over and say, can you come wash ours? And then we pick up new clients that way. Too. Free marketing right there. Yeah, it is. Yep. Way to go, you guys. Way to go. So what's the first big thing you're going to do now that you're 100% debt-free to celebrate? Um, we're going to come to Nashville and do the debt-free stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> well, we listen to those podcasts sometimes eight hours. We were in the barns alone while we were washing and waxing boats. It would be a beautiful day. Our friends are out on Lake Michigan sending us pictures of their toes in the sand and drinking margaritas and saying, where are you guys? So we would listen to the podcast. The podcast was our lifeline. Wow. And we really uh, said we're... You know, we, we just hoped we could be here one and day. And now you get to have your toes in the sand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Living like no one else. That's yep. right. And be generous. And we yeah. started with baby step one, and we paid off that smallest debt. And then that debt rolled into other debts. And, and as we paid them off, we had more money to pay the bigger debts. And then pretty soon, we were living on only 25% income, and everything was going to debts. And then even after we paid off our last mortgage, we continue living on 25%. Wow. And put and all that into retirement. 401ks and 403bs. Load it up, yeah. yeah. Load it up at the end. Way to go! Thank you. Yep. Way to Pretty go. Exciting. If you had one piece of advice to somebody listening, they're under the boat waxing out there mm-hmm. trying to get through it, what's the one thing you tell them about this whole process that you learned? 
You can do it. You can yeah. do it. Don't give up. Stay you know, dedicated. We started late. You know, we were 55 when we started, and we we thought we were doing okay, and uh, we were Dave Ramsey-ish, and we we uh, sat down and did a budget and thought, whoa, we are not where we should be. So you can do it. You can do it. It you get things paid off a lot quicker than you think. Yeah, two years went by fast. It went by sure fast. Sure did. And now you're free. Yeah, now, now we're free. free. Yeah, I love it. I'm proud of y'all. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very well done. What a great story. I love that. I want everyone to, out there who's in their 50s to go, when can we actually retire? And if it's not when you want to, it's time to make some changes. And Do you guys something. are living proof. It took two yeah. years, and you turned yeah. this whole thing around. Gazelle and turned the boat around. Two oh, years. Oh, there, oh. That was for you, Dave. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Very well done. All right, Raymond and Lana. Hey, we've got uh, the Total Money Makeover for you, the Baby Steps Millionaires book for you. You're, you're probably in there somewhere. <laughs> and right. uh, Financial Peace membership. You can give those away or use them or however you want to do it. Those are gift to you to say thanks for coming all the way from Kalamazoo to do your debt free scream 128,000 paid off in two years making 90 to 120 count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three two one we're, we're debt-free debt yeah. something happens george when you identify a goal that is bigger than people's opinions. Ooh. When you identify a goal, I want to retire by 5960, not 67, and I don't really care what you think. I'm going to go wax boats. I'm going to wait tables, 10 bar. I, I'm going to sell stuff, so much stuff out of the side of the door that my brother thinks we're doing drugs over here. I mean, you see, you, you just don't care what people think. All it's a of a sudden, you can do all kinds of crap. It is a freaking superpower. I you mean, know? it's amazing what can happen when you're willing to do anything to get something you never had. And Raymond and Lon are just living proof. They just busted their butts. And this wasn't a 10-year journey. It's it was two a years. Two year journey i could do anything for two years and i have at times Whew. the price people, i mean the price you, you got to pay a price to win nobody accidentally wins mm. you know and they didn't accidentally win they leaned in hard they went hard man and you know what they're completely done what happens is you accidentally two paid for two hundred fifty thousand dollar house live this mediocre life for 20 years where you're broke and all it takes is two years of intentionality to clean up the mess yeah and man, they're, they're heroes, absolute heroes, mm. fabulous couple. But that's that. That's what happens. All of a sudden, you know, you get dialed in. You go hubcaps. I don't need hubcaps. Who cares? Hubcaps are for you. They're not for me. I mean, I'm good. I'll get me some hubcaps later, and I'll get a different car too. So there. Hello. This is the Ramsey Show. here george camel is my co-host ramsey personality open phones at 888-825-5225 we're glad you're with us thanks for hanging out zinnia is next she's in los angeles hi zinnia welcome to the show how can we help uh yes thank you guys for having me on sure um my question is me and my husband just got out of debt we'll be completely debt free by december of this year congratulations <laughs> Thank you. Wait a minute. You'll be, is, you will be, you got out of debt or you will be out getting, of debt? We will be out of debt by December of this year. 12 more months? Yes. Okay. So my question is, we want to open a media company because we want to start working for ourselves, but we're not sure 
which route to take because everybody's been telling us either to take a business loan and I don't want to do that because we're just getting out of debt and Good. I don't want to go back into it. Good. So everybody's sure stupid. Don't do what everybody says on anything. Okay. Yeah. So what, what kind of a media company are you starting? Well, we want to be able to make our own movies because I write a lot of stories because I'm disabled and I, so I just am not a great author, so we figured making it into a film will be better because everybody's enjoyed it, but I'm not a great writer. Why do you need a media company in order to write a film script? Could you not sell the script? Um, pop, people have told me I could, but we want to just make make it into an actual film. Okay, I'm telling you, there's companies that will buy the script if it's good, and they'll make it into a movie, and they'll cover the production costs versus you, you know, going hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt to do this is a bad plan. I had no idea about that. Yeah, I would start there and just start doing your research on this industry and get, I mean, you're in L.A., get connected with people who are in this industry, and that's going to be your best bet to take the next step. But I, I don't think you need to start a media company today, and you definitely should not do it with any debt. Okay. What do you what, what do you do for a living now, hon? Um, I'm disabled, so my husband's a breadwinner. I do try to do some side gigs on the side, like on online, like side hustles. But um, we, it's been a struggle because we got hit really hard at the pandemic, and that's how we got into debt. Yeah. What What does your husband make? Uh, right now, he's um, making about sixteen thousand a year. Sixteen. Sixteen thousand. Yeah. How are you guys surviving? Well, we got lucky getting this rent this rental unit, which we're only paying four fifty a month for. What is he doing for work? He's essentially taking care of me because I, my health is not the greatest, so I always need somebody twenty four seven. So who who is paying him? Um, we I am. In this program called In-Home Support Services, and they're paying him to be around me 24-7. But they're paying him minimum wage to do this. Yes. Yeah. So this is a problem. It's not sustainable. It's not. But he... If you, if you have to have care 24-7, how are you able to make a film? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Sorry. That's okay. If you have to have care 24-7, how are you able to make a film? That's true. I I try to do what I can at home, though, because I, I have moments where I can do stuff sitting down. Yeah, I mean, I'm it's not, I'm not questioning you being lazy. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you're so limited, you have to have 24-7 care. 24-7 care um, I don't think you're going to be making a film. Unless I'm missing something. What no, you're not. Okay. You're right. Okay. So I think George is probably onto something. Let's start writing and see if we can write a script that we can get someone to buy the script. And I think that'll be helpful. And long term, we've got to think about your husband's career and your care and how we can accentuate those and create more income for the household. And it's not a media company. It's certainly not borrowing money to go into debt. To, to start a media company. We definitely don't want to do that. Kyle is with us in Gainesville, Florida. Hi, Kyle. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Hey, what's up? I'm looking for some expert opinion, I guess. Well, we'll call one. No, I'm kidding. How can we help? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my, my wife, she's been staying home uh, for the past three years with the kid. Mm -hmm. And she's got some retirement accounts from when she was working uh, with local government, uh, and she's been saying that we should cash them out to pay off some stuff. And I'm a CPA, so I'm all, always thinking about the tax implications of that and early penalty distribution, oh, early distribution penalties, and exactly. things like that. So exactly. Just, just trying to get an outside perspective. From. Yeah. What's your household income? Uh, Ninety-five. Okay. So cashing this out is going to cost you thirty percent plus a ten percent penalty, right? Right. Yeah, so that's a 40. I'm going to borrow money at 40% interest, honey, to pay off my Oof. debts. Right. I don't think so. How much debt do you have? Uh, we've got about 38,000, not including the mortgage. Okay. And you make 95. I think 
you're I think you just get on a tight budget and let's roll up our sleeves and get this paid for as quick as you can because yeah. I, you don't want to borrow money at forty percent interest. You you knew that before you called, right? Oh, I, I, I did. I'm, like I said, uh, this is an outside perspective. <laughs> He's just You're play just back the trying tape. to win the argument, and you did. <laughs> Way to go, Kyle. <laughs> I think you need to show her a plan as how we're going to pay this debt off with future income and current yeah. savings. And let's, and get, let's, get on a, let's get on a budget. Get on the every dollar budget. Get the app up tonight. Y'all get it out and look at it. Lay it out there on your website. I mean, on, on your desktop. Show her this is what we're going to do. But borrowing money at 40% interest is never a good plan, and that's the equivalent of doing that when you take that much in penalties. You give almost half your money to the government to cash us out early. Ugh. No, let's roll that old retirement plan into a good IRA and some good mutual funds and try to make a little money with our money. You say, honey, I love the spirit of you wanting to become debt-free so quickly, but here's a better way to do it. Beverly Sills' famous quote, there's no shortcut to any place that's worth going. Mm. There's a price to be paid to win. And you don't want to make things hard on purpose, but we don't want to cash out retirement. The only time we cash out retirement is to avoid foreclosure or a bankruptcy or, you know, something extreme like that. But it's not to pay off debt, and it's certainly not to buy crap, that kind of stuff, because you're going to get hammered. You get hit with your tax rate plus a 10% penalty. It's ridiculous. Mm. It's horrible. And using any kind of debt on top of that to, you know, people taking out HELOCs or the 401k loan to pay off debt, using one kind of debt to pay off other debt, it doesn't make sense. And so our plan always points back to using current savings, stuff you can sell, future income. That's the best path to do it. Yeah, and just crank down your stinking lifestyle and get in attack mode. That's the hard part. I think people truly don't want to sacrifice Yet they're willing to pay 40% interest. By, or looking for a shortcut. Yeah. Looking for a shortcut so I don't have to tell myself no. Do it the hard way the first time. Yeah. Otherwise, it's called a stupid tax, and you call us after you make the mistake. Well, I mean, learning, we all, part of, part of growing up and part of being an adult is just learning to say no to yourself and to others. I mean, and by the way, no is a complete sentence. You know, it's the ancient word. No one says it anymore. If you say no to people now, they just freak out. It hurts their feelings. Oh, well, they're 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 mad at you. I mean, you're you're some kind of evil monster. You know, you you suggested that I be denied. I'm just trying to live my truth, Dave. Yeah, you suggested that I don't How dare you suggest a no in my life? I'll, I'll help you with a big old no. It begins with an N, ends with an O. Ooh, just like that, a big old no. You just put your tongue towards the roof of your mouth, release air. Give your lips a little kissing motion. It sounds just like this. No. I think that's, that's universal. That Every culture understands that one. No. My dog understands that. Just shake no. your head. Uh-uh. No. No. It's a good word, but... You I can't mean, say no to your dog, Dave. I, I say no He's to so a lot of sweet. things. I say no to Dave. Even Dave gets a no. So, I mean, come on. Hey, that's called controlling yourself, you know? And not picking on Kyle by any stretch, but just everybody out there. I mean, if you don't get the concept of no, you're going to struggle the rest of your dadgum life with every part of your life. No, I can't eat that dadgum chocolate you brought in here a while ago. That's right. I actually no. tried to offer Dave some chocolate during the break. You did. This you, guy you practiced evil what he preaches. devil child. No. That's how I no. keep my physique. I offer Dave chocolates no. and I don't take them. No. Get away from me, George. No. That's how you do it right there. This is The Ramsey Show. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. 
Melanie is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Melanie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. So excited to be here. Thank you for taking my call. We're honored. How can we help? Um, first of all, let me just say, George, I'm reading your book. It's super awesome. Oh, thank Appreciate you so that. much. Appreciate that. So, yeah, no problem. So my, my question is, so my husband and I are in baby step two. Um, I'm working two full-time jobs. He's a school teacher and also has a training, like a personal training um, gig on the side that he does. He rents his own facility, um, but he's had it for four years. And my concern is that he really hasn't made any profit off of the business. He makes just enough to just pay the bills at, in the business. Um, at what point do I have that conversation that it may not be worth his time um, in the business just because it's just not bringing in yeah, enough yeah, I mean, revenue? Anything that doesn't make money is called a hobby. Right. It's not a side hustle. It's a hobby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He likes work. So he likes personal training so much he's willing to do it for free. Almost. I mean, he makes some money, but not as much as I think he should because he's been doing it for right. about Are you changing years your now? tune in the middle of the call? Which is it? How much does do he really mean? make? Net profit on the thing. Probably. It varies every month. So it can run, range anywhere from 1500 to like 2500 a month. Profit. Oh, well. You said after he pays his bills, he's not making much, if anything. He's not. He's what not. bills has he got? The rental on this place? Well, he, yeah, just the rental on the place. And then, you know, he has like um, that his utilities are included with the rent in the facility. And then he has like, I don't know, his internet or something that he pays. Okay, so he's but getting 1500 he, to 2500 in. What's the rent? Uh, 1600 So it almost takes everything. So if he doesn't make 1600 in a month, he loses money. Right. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to sit down tonight and say, honey, I, I, we've got to look at this as a business. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to look and see what we've got to do with your pricing and the number of clients that you have to make mm -hmm. what you're doing over there profitable. Mm -hmm. Because it's not okay that you're spending all this time over there and potentially even losing money. Right. So let's I get agree. let's get out yeah. the numbers. Let's get out the numbers and run a P&L on this thing. And mm -hmm. just, just sit there tonight and run a spreadsheet on it. How long has he been doing it? Um, he's had this place now for four years. Okay. Well, let's go back, la you know, for the last 12 months, mm -hmm. pull, the, pull the revenue, and then put in 1600 okay. a month, and then put in the internet fee a month, mm -hmm. and, and let's see if we've really got a profit or not. Figure okay. out what his hourly wage is on this. Yeah, and my then, guess and then is go, you can go okay, up you made, gym. You know, you made 500 bucks and you spent 600 hours over there. Right. You're making exactly. a dollar an hour. Come yeah, on, man. So, you know, as a business owner, how do you, like, at what point do you say, like, it's just not viable anymore? No, like, I mean, how much time he's do you supposed to be like an adult and stuff. He teaches children. Yeah. Yeah, he does. What does he teach? Uh, health and phys ed. Okay. And how, how what, what age children? Uh, anywhere from kindergarten to high school. Okay. And so we would assume that they know how to do basic addition of subtraction. Yes. And he should. Mm hmm If he's teaching them. I mean, really. I, yeah. I, I, we're, we're, he needs, you know, you need to sit down with him and say, I, I need you to look at this through the eyes of a business, and let's look at it for a few minutes, and let's see if you think this is worthwhile. But okay. I don't. you don't need to tell him. He needs to – he ought to be able to – a logical adult male, female, should be able to come to a conclusion on this mm -hmm. without his wife or husband telling them. I mean, you ought to be able to look at it and go, I'm making a dollar hour. No, yeah. that doesn't cut it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be providing okay. for my family during this time. No, no, no. And you guys are in debt. And so I think that's a part of this equation is we need to so, actually make money right now. So here's the thing. Anytime we're in a business situation with our entree leadership clients on a side hustle or a small business idea, we do one of a couple of things. One is we have to ask ourselves, what can we change to make this viable? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is there's not a change that will make it viable, then it's time to shut it down. Okay. I mean, I think I you guys are going to look at this and figure out. I think you're going to look that. at this and figure out you put $18,000 or what is $19,000 in rent into it last year. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and he brought in nineteen thousand five hundred bucks. I think that's what you're going to find. Yeah, I think so too. And and you know, so and then how many hours you spend over there? Divide that into five hundred, and you look at him and go, honey, what part of this is smart? None. Right. right. So, you know, you, so we something has to change. Mm-hmm. This is not okay. We have to raise our okay. prices, increase the number of clients, both. Or we got to say, we're not doing this anymore. Okay. Yep. I'm going to have that conversation. I appreciate your yeah. your opinion I on that. I guess the other thing is, you know, do you have a basement? We do. Why don't you do it down there? Yeah. 1600 a bucks a head per month instantly. Mm-hmm. Another thing people do now is they'll go to your house and do the work out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing they can yeah, do, he can do is just go work at a gym that already has personal training and they hire him and pay him money. So he doesn't have any of the overhead. Yeah. So there's a I lot of options. Part here. of the equation on the business model may be getting rid of this rent. And suddenly, yeah, you're you're doing in-home work and in your home work in in other people's homes for them, you know, personal training, you go visit Jim, then you go visit George and then you do whatever. I mean, That's the dream. And they pay you money, you know, and um I have a gym in my house. We did that for a long time. And so um, my wife made fun of me. She said, you know, the guy's counting for you. you but that's know, what you, you can't needed. You can't count to 10. You're that's what you needed guy. in that moment. You're paying that guy big money for counting? I was, no, I'm paying him for accountability. Ooh. There's that. But uh, I, I can count to 10. I already can do one, two. I can, I can but count. you need a guy yelling at you other than the guy yeah. in your head. We don't need anybody yelling at me. But um, but we need someone. Just, well. I know if he's going to come over there, then I'm going to do the workout, right? Otherwise, I might find my little butt on the sofa. Mm. You know, that could happen. And so that's that's what, you know, that's what a personal trainer does sometimes. We know it. We can Google the workout. We hire the personal trainer because we need that level of hand-holding right now. Yeah, I mean. If you, that's okay. Yeah. So, I mean. Do it. He could he could provide the service like George is saying. Charge even more to come to people's homes in person, um, and or in your basement, and or if you're going to keep the location, you got to make the location. Having the location needs to cause you to make more money than not having the location would have cause you to make. Uh, I think you're going to get rid of this location at a minimum. This is the Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Stephanie is in Indianapolis. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks so much for taking the call. Sure. Um, my hus- husband and I have a question. We bought our first home three and a half years ago. Got a really great interest rate at the time. The house was appraised at two fifty before we put on a new roof, and we're having to replace a furnace. And that's part of our frustration. It's an older home, almost a hundred years. And at what point, there's a, I suppose there's a tipping point somewhere where uh, you keep putting money in the old house and keep the good interest rate and just get a little more equity out of it or a broader picture, we don't want to maybe be here forever, a little more land, a little newer house maybe at 100 years old. And um, we're just wondering how much longer should we stay? Um, we can't get to the aesthetics part of renovating, so it's just maintaining the house, which we can do it. But it's just frustrating. Yeah. And it's like, okay. At so what point is it maybe They're cute. To... Those historics are cute, but they're a pain in the butt. They don't build them like they used to, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, so, yeah, I've done a bunch of those. They're, they're very interesting. Um, yeah. I, I think you're done. 
I, well, I, I feel done now because I got willied out of uh, the furnace that we're replacing at some point, hopefully this week. Yeah, um, I think you're done. Doing carbon. It was giving out carbon monoxide. I'm like, oh, my word. We're yeah. going to die. <laughs> yeah. So what's wrong with selling it? Um, I'm just, I, I don't want to necessarily move and then move again in three years. So it'd be nice to. Uh, where are you going to move? Why, where are you going to move that you got to move in three years? Who said you had to? Just well, move. Just don't want to move up in house and then feel like I have to move up again. You know, I'd like to move into a house. That's the idea, more the ideal. Uh, not that there's a perfect house, but. Let um, me help you with this. I you thought that was ideal when you moved into it. No, this one wasn't, but it was a blessing for where we were at. For a first-time homeowner, the house has been a blessing. Okay. Um, How long have you I, owned I it? I guess it's a money. It's a reach like to get the house we want. It's a little bit of a reach. So don't perhaps. reach. Just buy the house that's not 100 years old and not having to screw with it all the time. Okay. That'll feel like a dream home compared to this. The, my, this idea yeah. that you're going to buy something that automatically is going to be what you want for 10 years, it's not. There's no automatic. Because life changes, things shift, your needs, your dreams, everything changes, and you're going to move again. You don't have to move every three years, but um, but you also don't have to reach to something you can't afford either. So what will this house sell for? Uh, probably around two, uh, best, can, pick best case scenario is 260. And you've owned it how long? Three and a half years. Okay. All right. You have no capital gains on it, and you sell it and buy the next property and... Uh, what's your household income? Uh, this coming year, it'll be a hundred five to ten at least. Oh, well, you you can definitely make a move. Well, what's left on the mortgage? I have about one hundred fifty. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna have a hundred thousand dollars equity, give or take, coming out of there, and go buy you something else. Yeah. Uh, and That's I know Dave. She was worried about the. She said we got a nice low interest rate, so that she doesn't want to let go of that, which is a problem a lot of people are facing out there. Well, you either got the furnace and the roof. And all the crap falling down around you, or you got the interest rate. You got to decide. I mean, there's there's always a trade off, and so you got the hassle of moving and not going to get to buy what you want. Well, you're, of course you're not going to buy what you want. You know, you know, it, it, things always change. So it's up to you. But I, you know, when you call me and all you can talk about is all the money you've spent on the thing, you're done. You're done. So stick a fork in it. Move on. You know, that's it. And you can always refinance later. If rates go down, you're not stuck with that rate forever. Date the rate, marry the house. Get a good house and don't worry about the rate. Rate will come down. When it comes down, refinance. Then you're fine. You date the rate, marry the house. And most people following the Ramsey baby steps, Dave, we found pay off their home in seven years. So you're not stuck. Even if you had that interest rate, yeah. you might have it for seven years. Pay yeah. the dang thing off, upgrade in cash on the next one. And you'll be okay. Lean into the process here. Karen is with us in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Karen. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hey, what's um, up? I'm doing well. It's, it's an honor to speak to you. You too. How can we help? Uh, well, my husband and I have actually gone through Financial Peace University, and we're doing really well. Uh, we, uh, As of 2022, we were, uh, you know, had a fully funded business safeguard account. We had our emergency fund funded. We had no debt other than our house. And uh, at that time, my husband got a not so good medical diagnosis. Uh, so that set us back that year. And then ultimately, he decided to make a step into uh, a profession that he wanted to be in. And that essentially cut our income almost in half for now. Um, so he's doing, he's doing much better with that and, and moving forward, progressing forward. But my question is, um, as a result of those two things, we, we had to, you know, tap into those safeguard accounts and pretty much depleted most of them. And now we've got some credit card debt. We have some stock that is not in any kind of retirement account. So, my question to you is, do I sell that stock and pay that little bit of credit card debt that, that we do have now, or should I let that stock sit and just continue to not accumulate any more credit card debt, but, you know, just make payments on that? Well, what happens next time? What happens next time? Next time there's mean? a bump in the road and you land on a dadgum credit card again. When are you going to stop this foolishness? Well, um, I mean, we were able to to 
do quite well for you know a while and, and yeah until you didn't on, on, uh, you know on until the you started credit living on credit cards again have. well we didn't really live on them i mean w- yeah you did you I bought guess. crap well, we, you couldn't afford to them. buy well it was more monthly things that we already had an obligation for um because we weren't meeting our, our monthly budget okay. because of that. So when you use income. the stock to pay off the credit cards and the next time you go on one of these adventures where you don't meet the monthly obligations and you lean on credit cards, what are you going to do then? Well, I would hope we wouldn't be back in this position. I would hope again. you wouldn't have been here this time. I'm not going to give you permission to say what you did was okay. What you did was not okay. It was a really bad, dumb plan. And if you're going to use every time something comes along to get yourself back into credit card debt, I can't help you because you've used up your stock then. So if I tell you to cash out this stock and then you go do this again, you're screwed, girl. You follow me? Yeah, I guess this was kind of a one-time. No, it's not. A one-time thing, though. No, it's not. Always life's going to bring you something. It's always going to be something coming up. Until you decide no matter what, let me tell you when the time is we're going to use a credit card at the Ramsey's. Never, under any circumstances. We'll sell everything in sight, including the dog and three of the grandkids. We will never again go into a credit card debt, ever, under any circumstances, period. Nothing will cause that to happen. We will be riding a bicycle instead of driving a car, but we won't have debt, ever, See, until you get there, kiddo, you're going to go back again. You're going to go back again. You're going to go back again because there's always something comes up because there's a crack. And as long as there's a crack in the thing, the water's going to leak through. So, yes, you should cash out the stock and you should pay off the credit cards. But you have got to. The two of you have got to sit down and go, we flunked Financial Peace University. We flunked the class. So we have got to reset and draw a line in the sand and say, never under any freaking circumstances, are we ever going to have a credit card in our house? Cut it up, close the accounts, and then you won't have the opportunity to be blessed with the 22% APR from these credit card companies. That's the easiest way to do it, because then you're going to find another way when debt's not an option, when debt's off the table. I got a friend that lost his career. He lost his family. He lost everything because of a drinking problem. Mm. He's now been dry. For 30 years. You know when he's going to drink again? Never. Never. You know when alcohol is going to be in his house again? Never. Ever. You got to decide. This is the Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Samantha's with us. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you guys doing? Well, better than we deserve. Oh, Where do you live? Dallas, Texas. All right. Welcome to Nashville. Thank you. And how much debt have you paid off? $57,208.66. Way to go. How long did that take? 27 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 70000 to 106 Cool. What do you do for a living? I am a DPMO, so basically I'm a program manager of operations. Wow. Good yeah. for you. And what kind of debt was the $57,000? Credit card debt. I had medical debt. I had a car loan and the infamous student loan debt. You had it all. You were normal. Yes, sir. Wow. You what a, a lineup. <laughs> a prize for collecting them all. Yeah. yeah. My paycheck. How, how old are you? 
I'm 31. Okay, very cool. So what happened 27 months ago that Samantha got a wake-up call, and how'd you get connected to us? Sure. Um, so about a year and a half before that, I gave my life to the Lord. I mm-hmm. was at my rock bottom, gave my life to the Lord. Cool. And I got serious about actually following God about six months after that. So I started reading the Bible, and it, the Bible says debt is bad. Very so cool. I had this plan that I was going to pay off my student loan in 10 years. And I told my brother-in-law and my sister, and they said, well, you can actually pay it off in two years. You can actually pay off all of your debt. They said they did. Um, they met this guy, Ramsey, uh, Dave Ramsey, and they paid off all of their debt. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, well, met you, your show. Yeah. So um, yeah. they did that. And I thought they were crazy. I was like, they don't know how much debt I have. Mm -hmm. So um, me being me, I started doing some research. I got the Total Money money Makeover, read the book. I Mm -hmm. listened to some of uh, your teachings. Mm -hmm. And what really did it for me was listening to the podcast because you had people of all walks of life, single people, married people, younger people, uh, more tenured people. More um, tenured. That was sweet. (laughs) So nice. That's what I am, George. I'm tenured. She didn't make eye contact with you, so that's good. (laughs) That was a personal dig. Yes. So, um, yeah, and then I started on the plan um i want to be a good steward of uh the things that god has for me so amen where do you go Beautiful. to church in dallas uh life fellowship oh in yeah mckinney yes very nice very nice so you just leaned into the the podcast after reading the book mm-hmm. and started following and doing the stuff and yes. just straight up did it i did um i really got some momentum because my credit card debt was smaller i was able to do that within the first two months but mm-hmm. then um really getting after my car and seeing how quickly i was able to pay it off mm-hmm. it it really gave me momentum. I started um, babysitting, dog sitting, house sitting, cat sitting. A lot of sitting. Yes. Um, I was in school getting my master's when I started this. So uh-huh. um, as you know, with getting an extended degree, you don't even have enough time to cry, let alone get a regular second job. So uh-huh. I had to be creative with it. So I did that. I learned how to coupon and I cut down 98% of my um personal expenses for like toiletries and household items wow yeah you were like extreme coupon or that <laughs> i wouldn't say extreme like you were getting paid at the store the yes, cashier was yes. like here's 20 dollars." yes they they did i got good enough at it where they actually started um owing me money when i would go couponing so and then i started selling my stockpile i was able to give some of it away to single moms and people in need so yeah. wow well, it sounds like you you had a heart for generosity throughout this whole process, yes. which is beautiful. Yes, which was hard because you know I my money was going to debt and I couldn't give it away out you know outside of tithing, but mm-hmm. I got creative that way to be able to still give. That's inspiring. well done. What's your master's in? Um, I got my master's in management with a um, uh, operations excellence. Yeah, yeah, right there in your job. Way to yeah. go! So did yes, you sir. get a raise in this process and promotion? Yeah, that's the seventy to one hundred six, right? I did actually. It's actually an interesting story. Um, I was going to get laid off in the middle of doing this, so I started looking for another job, and I found the current job that I had, so that my income went up to eighty five, and then they saw um, they appreciated my work ethic, so they gave me a twenty percent raise. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good for you. Thank you. How fun. Your, yes. your sister and brother-in-law got to be cheery. They are. They would be here, but my sister is extremely pregnant, so she couldn't travel. <laughs> but I know they're watching, and I'm so thankful to them. They cheered me on. Every time I'd pay off $5,000, I'd be like, I still have 50 left. But they were excited. Like, I paid everything off. So they were great cheerleaders That's in my good church momentum. family. Yes. They... Um, they would take me out to eat because I wasn't going out to eat. I wasn't spending extra money for Christmas. They'd buy me clothes because I would buy one pair of jeans a year until literally I had holes in it because I was trying to save as but much money as I can. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool now. Yes, yes, it is. Um, well, maybe not for work, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Samantha, you're amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. I'm so proud of you, hero. Thank you. God is amazing in me. That's well done. Amazing. He is amazing. Yes, and. Uh, is so happy you found him, and that's what started the whole process. Yes. Wow. Very, so very, very cool. What do you tell that person who's 29, mm-hmm. and they're looking at $57,000 in debt, and they're like, well, 10 years, maybe I'll pay off my student mm-hmm. loans. What would you tell that person if you were sitting across from them getting coffee? Sure. I would tell them to look at how much interest they were paying, because that was what upset me. I would make a payment, and so little was going towards the principal, and so much was going towards the interest. And it was actually funny, when I paid my car off, or I got close, they called me and asked me if everything was okay. And I said, yeah, I'm trying to pay my car off. But um, I would say that 
the first thing would be Jesus. Um, It says in his word that his faithfulness is a protective shield. When you're obedient to God's word, he's going to bless you. My income going up, that was a blessing from God. So when you walk with him, he will bless you. And then secondly, endurance. There's so many quick quick fix plans for getting out of debt. But um, what I love about this plan, it taught me that I don't need to impulse buy. That was a reality that I had to come face to face with. And also that I did this to myself. I swiped that credit card. I went and got that um, car loan. I did those things, but I was gonna work really hard to get out of debt and do that and be an example to my nephew and to my future children. My sister and I and my brother-in-law are first generation believers, so we want to show the next generation that they can do this without debt. You can go to school without debt. You can get a master's. I was able to get my master's without taking out additional money, so um, you can do it. I had a surgery, my dog got sick, all of that, but because I was doing this plan, Um, and inflation, because I was doing this plan, I was able to pay cash for those things and I didn't have to rely on a credit card or a loan to do that. Rockstar, you're amazing. Wow, ding, 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 ding. Pretty incredible. You have changed uh, your family tree, you've changed your whole life. Uh, The gospel has transformed you. It's very powerful, very powerful. Well done, (laughs) very, very, very well done. I love it. So when, I guess I'm going to phrase it again. Maybe George asked this, but let's see if we can do it one more time. Boil it down. If you told people to do one thing or two things to get out of debt, what would you tell them to do? Endurance. 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 Don't quit. Don't quit. You can do it. Um, 27 months is a long time and 27 months is nothing. Yes. And you can be very creative. I mean, my friends still had babies. I was able to coupon and get $110 worth of diapers for 41 cents. Um, You can find different deals and, you know. Wow. It's out there. You're smart enough to do it. Just because I have a master's doesn't mean I'm like overly smart or anything. You can figure out how to be creative and how to get out there and hustle. It is possible to do it. You're amazing. Yeah. Well done. Hey, we've got the Live and Give box for you, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, because that's where you're headed for sure. Yes, sir. Total Money Makeover book to give to somebody and give them some hope. Uh, Financial Peace University membership. Go through it or give it away. That's uh, the Live and Give box. People buy it all the time, but we're going to give it to you to say thanks for coming all the way from Dallas. Thank Congratulations, you. Samantha. Thank you. Samantha from Dallas, Texas, $57,000 paid off in 27 months. The coupon queen from <laughs> 70 to 106. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Yes. Three, two, one. All glory be to God. I'm debt-free. I want to be Samantha when I grow up. Man. She's impressive. Be careful. Your life will preach. Mm. Wow. Powerful. Powerful. This is the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Tommy Lasorda said, pressure is a word that is misused in our vocabulary. When you start to think about pressure, it's because you've started to think of failure. Hmm, there we go. Dakota is in Dallas. Hi, Dakota. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Hey, so I am 27 years old. I am making around $76,000 a year between my full-time job and a part-time job that I picked up. Cool. I am fortunate to not have any credit card debt, which is 
great, and I'm very thankful for that. But I am sitting around $45,000 in debt between my student loans and a car loan. Uh-huh. Um, my student loans are around 31000 across five loans with my highest interest rate at 6.6%. And then my car, I have about 14000 left at a 3.79% interest rate. So uh-huh. I'm sitting around six sixty six hundred dollars in my savings account, and I followed along with the show and hearing you know the goal of having one thousand dollars in savings is great. However, having that little amount also gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, just thinking of you know random things that could come up here and there, car breaks down, you know, extra expenses, things like that. So I guess my question is, with my lowest student loan being around three thousand dollars, technically I do have a savings account to just start, you know, knocking that out right away while still having a little over three thousand left in the account. So I guess the question is, should I plan to start drawing from that savings account to start knocking those, you know, student loans out and the car out, paying extra there? Um, or should I leave that savings account alone, look at refinancing? I'm not sure. How deeply are you willing to cut your lifestyle and how many hours are you willing to work to where you could do this in one year? Yeah, so... For, 46, I, what did you my, say, 40, 41,000, right? 45,000. About 45,000. Out, out of 76,000. Out of 76,000 means you live on 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you live on a little bit more but you pay off everything in one year. Yeah, I'm really, I, I'm working about 40 to 50 hours for my full-time job salaried position. Um, and then my part-time job, I was pulling an extra like 15 to 20 hours a week there mm-hmm. um, at a retail gig. Mm-hmm. Um, for my mental health, having that much time working. Why does it, it hurt your lot. mental health to great. work? Um, just between the responsibilities. It's not that I don't have the mental health of the capacity to work. I don't want to come across like that. You said for my mental health, that's a bunch of crap. Yeah, it was just to the point where I was feeling super overwhelmed with the amount of hours I was putting in. I wasn't yes, because you did not have a you you did not you felt like a rat in a wheel, though you were not getting traction. If you were seeing this debt drop off at three to four thousand dollars a month and you knew you were going to be done a year, you'd be fine working. But you were just stuck working. Yeah, I, I did. That's yeah. That's a good. That's a better way of putting it. I felt really stuck. I felt like I was yeah. getting all this extra money, and then it. Because I was trying you know, to allocate working it all the time and, really hard. If you got great traction, it's not that harsh. Right. It's not what you right. want to do the rest of your life. But I want you to be done in a year. In that case, one thousand dollars as an emergency fund is not as scary because you're going to be done in a year. Mm-hmm. Oh, was it, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have almost six thousand dollars now, right? Yeah, I've got about $6,600 in my savings account. Oh, so we're going to put 6000 on the 45 So now we've only got thirty nine to do in a year. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I guess to get further clarification, so the 1000 like I said, does give me a little bit of anxiety because I just think, I want example, you to have a little bit of anxiety. To, What's giving you anxiety is yeah. $45,000 in debt hanging over yeah. you. Feeling stuck. When you are knocking <laughs> yeah. off three to $4,000, you're not going to have anxiety. You're going to be knocking it out, and then you're going to be done. You're You're going to be 28 years old and not have a payment in the world. Can you breathe that in? I know. Wow. What is your recommendation? Because I think— That is my recommendation, darling. Well, I had to replace two tires on my car, so I think if I'd have only had $1,000 in my— That's enough to replace two tires. And then you replenish it. So you'd pause the debt snowball. Let's say that you have another two tires go out. Pause the debt snowball. Your next paycheck's going to cover the tire. You already have a mm-hmm. thousand in the emergency fund, and then you move okay. on. You just okay. pick up where you left off. Get the thousand bucks back instead of three thousand or four thousand going on your debt this month. Only two thousand does because you got to buy some tires. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, but you got two new yeah. tires now, so I... that that problem's out of your way. Yeah, you know, there'll be something else <laughs> yeah, though. There'll be they're... something else break. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and you're going to be working yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, you won't have time to spend money. Right. And don't worry, just before you die, you'll pass out. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I'll, I'll pass out and be that free. So. Exactly. <laughs> I'm kidding with you, kiddo, but listen, if you, the, the trick is this we have figured out that the more intense people are, the math almost quits working, you get out so fast. 
because you mm-hmm. create this emotional, spiritual momentum that goes with the right. math momentum, and it becomes all-encompassing. I mean, you become like like you joined a cult or something for a short period of time, right? It, you don't think about anything else for a short period of time and then you're going to be 28 years old and not have a payment in the world and you've been playing footsie with this stuff for almost a decade Mm -hmm. it's been hanging around like a problem talk about anxiety inducing yeah and i i am wanting to get all of this taken care of you know my boyfriend and i are both individually trying to take care of our debt before we decide to take that next step of getting married and starting a family and things like that. So um, you, you don't have yeah, to wait I'm, to get I'm, out of debt to be married. You just yeah, both no, have to, I'm, you both well, have to be in agreement that we're going to get out of debt. That's all. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I'm, I'm ready to get it knocked out though. Do it, do it, do it. Dakota, Dakota, Dakota. I dare Dakota, you to take 5,600 and attack Dakota. some debt today. You're going to get a little pep in your step. So, Hey, Samantha, was just on here doing her debt-free scream. She made $70,000 when she started. She paid off 57000 in 27 months mm-hmm. and finished her master's degree. And yeah. cash flowed all kinds of expenses. That was right before you, just a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Single. Your age. Just a minute yeah. ago. Go back and watch her yep. debt-free scream just a minute ago. See, you, you can absolutely do this. You can absolutely. So get it. Dakota. 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 We're cheering Dakota. you on. Hey, we're going to put you in Financial Peace University and pay for it. And we're going to put you in the every dollar premium so you can hook up and run your budget. And I want you to just go crazy for a short period of time so you get your life back. And you you do that, Dakota, you will never go back in debt. And you will become wealthy because you will pay attention to money and make it behave the rest of your life. Money is a fabulous slave. It is a horrible master. And it has been owning your butt. For a decade, it's time you got on top of it and you own it. Dakota, Dakota, Dakota. She could do it, George. Mm, she yeah, do well, it. I just keep thinking about this mental health crisis in America, and I think it has more to do with debt than a $1,000 emergency fund. We're feeling well, out listen, of control, I mean, rat in when, a wheel. When, when, when you're doing stupid stuff or you or you're don't have a sense of destiny, everything is anxiety-inducing. Mm. I mean, stupid should induce anxiety. They have a direct you should, connection. You should, you should have anxiety if you're doing stupid stuff, shouldn't you? That's your body telling you this is I mean, not I, smart. That's, that's yeah. That's like you're not stupid okay. Really, should be anxiety inducing. I mean, really, she's not doing stupid, but I'm just saying the. But I'm just in general, you know, and, and working and not knowing where you're going, that, like she was talking about. That that is that does do that. But hard work does not cause mental health problems. Never has. As a matter of fact, it solves a lot of them. Uh, actually, talk to Dr. John Deloney. I was talking about it with him on the air the other day about this. One of the things that they tell people uh, that, that are struggling with depression is get outside vitamin D and in, engage in physical activity and get engaged in something where you're seeing traction. Mm. All of those sound like work to me. So, yeah, work your butt off. Go crazy for a short period of time. And, you know, work is not anxiety-inducing, ever. Well, it is if you're working for a toxic jerk. I take that back. But, yeah, but I guess, but I mean, just the essence of work itself is not anxiety-inducing. Yeah. So, very cool. Dakota, Dakota, Dakota. Hold on. Austin's going to pick up. We're going to get you signed up for everything. We're going to give it to you because we believe in you. Woo! We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace. Christ Jesus.